Hey guys, uh, I seem to have come across some uh, hot tweezers, and um, well, we're gonna take it apart because I kind of had to go at it or at using it, and it works pretty well, but it doesn't really make sense of how it works. So uh, yeah, I found this thing in like the dumpster. Uh, it's pretty beat up. You can see it. But, I mean, it works. Takes 110 volts in. And it, uh, it basically strips wires. You can see the different hole gauges. They're all pretty small gauges, but, um, it gets very hot enough that this actually starts to smoke. Uh, this right here is the adjuster to set how deep you want your, uh, wires, even though it doesn't really work too well, but, I mean it's it's neat it's at least so you can make pretty uniform uh, uniform wires but yeah we're gonna take this apart so this right here is like a little switch um, yeah on off switch rheostat or a potentiometer or something and like two uh, this is a two and a half millimeter jack that's a uh, two poles, and then there's a high and low, as well as a little neon indicator, and it's made there, I don't know if they're still in business, and this is called the M10 power supply, 115 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 20 watts, yeah, it's made locally here in California, uh, Westlake Village is actually not too far from me, so, I'm going to take this apart. It's all Phillips screws. <clears throat> so, this part is on some kind of a, a little uh, rubber stopper here to keep it from coming all the way out, and this presumably pushes against some kind of a switch on a hinge. It's all uh, spot welded. <coughs> so. I just try to slide forward. And there we have it. What year was this? Because that construction, man, that's some pretty old ass construction. Uh, see some date codes on here. Maybe. I don't really see any. Oh, this might be one. Uh, seventh week, 89. 1989? Maybe. It looks like it. Uh, nothing on here. I guess I can look. Maybe they have a website or an address. Or a, a Wikipedia or something. Uh, well, this is the little switch. So let's just keep taking it apart some more. Let's actually look at uh, how this is assembled before we go any further. So mains comes in here, and there's a black wire, white wire, and a green wire right there. The green wire appears, it's a green yellow, so it goes all the way to this side, it goes to the center binding post, and uh, screwed onto the chassis and the transformer. Now, this black wire goes to this switch, which it has three pins on the switch, but only two are connected, assuming that when this is on, it connects those two. So then, from that white wire, it goes all the way here, which, okay, which connects to this top post. 
and then to one side of the neon and the one side of the transformer then the white wire from this side is a bit of a thicker wire so that's a neutral goes here to this other black wire which I'm assuming is the other transformer end and this neon which is the other side of the neon so from there we know that this side is our primary so our 110 volt side and this is our secondary so this is going to be our low voltage high current presumably um, now there's two taps one tap goes this way into this rheostat which is a 2 ohm rheostat which is pretty crazy capable of uh, 3.54 amps UL listed surprisingly that's pretty awesome it's a very like chunky rheostat it's it's pretty good like like look at the traces on it they're huge I've never seen one with that big of a trace and the uh the copper uh, slidey thing it's even got like a little spring there just for the little imbalances or the imperfections and the copper strappings okay so um the common or one end of the transformer assuming it goes like this so like this is the two outer ends and this is a middle tap so this end goes to the right side of the rheostat the center and the middle so the center pin connects here to the normally closed part of the switch and then the normally open is attached to this end and then the common of the switch so the output of the two or of this side of the transformer after going through the rheostat goes all the way to oh to the banana or not the banana jacks the little uh, two and a half millimeter phono jacks so they get what is that um, yeah they're just common together on the same rails uh, appears to be the jacket of the two rails and then the tip goes from the back end to these little tips and then those return to the transformer now the outermost winding is attached to high and then the inner one is attached to low um, the way that I thought this worked was that once you put these together it shorts it out and then once it shorts out it uh, it completes the circuit and gets hot but I noticed that when I turned it off, or when I wasn't doing this, it was still melting like the jacket of the uh, switch, or of the wire. And also, in the crack in between, it does not look like they're separated, so maybe they are constantly hot? Or that there's something going on inside of the... Uh, Tweezer, but I have no idea. So this is the basic circuit. Oh, uh, you know, high, low. So that's really it. Um, it's just got the switch on the live side with the neon indicator, the transformer, the rheostat, or the potentiometer, whatever the hell you want to call it. But uh, and then with the center pin attached to the normally closed and the outer pin of the rheostat connected to normally open on the switch this is triggered by uh, like when you put the tweezers back in the holder um, yeah and then just straight high low so when you put the tweezers back on the thing it doesn't necessarily turn it off um, it just puts it in a lower setting because it runs through the 2 ohm resistor essentially then when you put it um, when you take it off it's on normally connected and it would just run at whatever resistance that you have it set to but then it doesn't really explain why it was still on like when I didn't have the tweezers closed I'm gonna have to look at the tweezers and how those work 
So I fixed up the case, and uh, yeah, that looks pretty well. I put all the screws back into place. I didn't do a full tear down. It's just just enough to see how it works. Um, so I have a fluke multimeter out here. Uh, this is a clamp style one. Uh, I don't have my normal one with me because my dad's using it since it does PWM. Let's get that in the shot. Turn the light that totally does not help. Um, so I have the uh, the wire of the tweezers, the probe end. Right now the probe is open, and I have the multimeter set to ohms mode. Let's make sure it works. There's no zeroing function on this. Uh, okay, so half an ohm is what these wires or the leads are. So if I just stick it on here, 1.4 ohms. So is about 8.8 .8 ohms. 0.8.9, something like that. Um, so that means then that was with these open. So that means they're always on. Now how the hell does this get hot so quickly? So like there's like, it looks like a bit of nichrome wire right here. Right there, some nichrome wire maybe. And that's how they must be doing local heating. But then there's, there's probably like this is hollow. And, and it would go through there. It's very interesting. I'm going to set it to AC amps. This clamp only does AC amps. I have another fluke attachment that uh, that goes into other meters and you plug it on, uh, you'd put it on uh, millivolts and it would show you the amps in DC and AC through a clamp, which is pretty awesome, but uh, I don't have it with me right now. Okay. Took off the probes. Now, we're only going to probe the high because I tried using low before and it wasn't exactly the best. So, I pro probing the high, we'll set inrush. I'll get the tweezers. I'm not going to put it on the stand because, yeah. So, plug that into the high. Now it's off. I have outlet down here. Let's turn that on. Okay. So right now I have it set to, uh, let's set it to about 4. I used it at 4 a couple days ago. And nothing. Well, 2.2 .2 amps. I guess inrush doesn't work for uh, lower currents. Uh, Touching this metal because it's cooled down. See so what happens if I turn it up. 2.3, 2.4, 2 2.7 amps. See, look, I don't know if you can see it, there's smoke coming off the tip. I'm touching this part down here and it's not hot. And it smells like fucking candle wax that's been burning. So that's obviously too hot. Let's just wick it all the way down to three. Three is about two amps. Um, yeah, let's see how this works. So, let's find a piece of wire. Got a piece of wire from this screen right here. Now, I get it. It's already sh whatever. So what you do is you place the wire in your gauge and you just pull it. Okay, that was maybe a bit terrible. This thing's way too hot. Try it with the other end. So I might have picked too small of a hole. I guess you can test it by doing this. Huh. Seems like I picked the right one, but I think it's a bit tight. And then, and then that kind of shit happens where it sticks to it, but I guess that's why I move my bench outside. It's fucking stink. Oh god, it's even worse. But, yeah, pretty cool.